Yeah, I'm uh, Dave. I play bass in a band called Dragged In out of Toronto. Uh, I'm Marty. I play guitar also in a band Dragged In, and we're out from Toronto too. Guys, it's really an honor to have you on the show. I love that project. Uh, for people at home in Quebec that maybe never heard about that project, how, how you guys started up? How you guys met? Uh, so Marty and I met, I guess, probably about 10 years ago, thereabouts. Uh, we started playing in another band called Deadmouth out of Toronto. Um, and we eventually had that band run its course and uh, we were looking for something to do and at that point in Dead Mouse history, uh, Dragon's drummer Bruce had come in to join us uh, to play some shows because our drummer got really busy with work and Bruce was filling in for him and then, you know, as I said, the band ran its course and then Marty and I were left there with Bruce playing with us and we decided we'd start a new project um, and we brought in the other guitarist, Cox, uh, who played with Bruce in another band called End Program who uh, actually came out to Quebec a few times with Ego Abortion um, and we brought Cox and Bruce in to play, and uh, we enlisted the help of Patty on vocals. Uh, Patty sings in another band called Brutal Youth, uh, who you may have heard of as well, and uh, so we kind of brought all these entities together. I think the first EP was actually recorded without Cox, but he did the tracking and mixing of it, and uh, when he heard the songs, he liked it, he wanted to join the band, and we wanted a second guitarist, so it kind of worked out perfectly of just the perfect mix of friends looking to play together, and that's how it came about. Yeah, well, I mean, it's it's cool being in Toronto. I mean, Marty can talk about it a little more, but there's a lot of music that happens and a lot of opportunity to play. Yeah, there's there's, there's so many bands in Toronto. It's crazy, for sure. And, and there's such a great scene as well. That, you know, so many, well, there's less venues now than ever, but the, the ones that you can play at, <laughs> they're always booked solid. So there's a lot of shows going on and a lot of bands come through here to tour, obviously. Um, yeah. There's a lot of opportunity if you, you're talking to the right people. Yeah, yeah, it's a beautiful city, and and I think uh, a lot of cultures, um, you know, are involved in Toronto. And I mean, every style of music are kind of going well and connecting together and that's what i enjoy you know people uh from punk rock seeing you know um i don't know like folk show or you know whatever rap or and people are are digging it and it brings something kind of different and and i love the energy you guys put on and and the rage and everything it's kind of well you know built and well you know sounding and and you have your own sound man Is it something that came naturally? Yeah, I'd say so, right? Yeah, I think so. I mean, a lot of it has to come down to, like, writing the riffs. And we, we have a pretty similar process where, you know, the idea comes from one person uh, and they'll bring it into a jam and then we jam it together. And then it's an iterative process where we work on it. So we take the riff into the jam and we jam it as a group and then we work it out over time. <coughs> But, you know, it's at the end of the day, something we would want to listen to and it has the energy of something that we would want to go off to and that's kind of, I guess, a bit of the process. So that's how it comes about, but it's natural because that's just the way we like to write, I guess. Yeah, that's what I felt. And and there's a lot of space of, of creating live with those songs. It kind of evolved because, you know, there's so much energy. You can bring a lot of element, you know, uh, live. And we felt that, that, that you guys are really a live band. Like, because the impact on the record is amazing. But we felt that we can get a lot more, like, seeing you live. Yeah, well, I, 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 we're lucky that our stinger is a, a, an absolute maniac. Um, when it comes to a live show, he's pretty unpredictable, which I like a lot of when I go see a band is, is having that kind of presence up front. Um, and so he brings a certain amount of energy to the live show. And I think, you know, Marty brings a lot creatively to the recorded music but just because I, I think he has a really, and he's probably going to hate that I'm saying this right now, but he has a really unique way that he hears music and that he writes around that music so the way he writes a melody is different than i think a lot of people would write a melody to it in a very good way and i think that, that brings something fresh and a different type of energy to the music as well so uh, i think there's you know the impression coming from the way we write the mix and then there's also the impression when we get live 
of what Patty brings to the table as far as the energy that he puts into the live show. Yeah, well, I think you can tell a difference between the bands that are out there that are pouring themselves into what they're doing into their music when they're playing live, and that translates onto the record when, when you hear the record as well. And I think for me, you know, the bands I've always gravitated towards are the ones that have that authenticity in, in their passion when they're live. So, you know, bands like Sick of It All, bands like Agnostic Front, bands like Converge for something more modern. Um, you know, you, you can actually see the, the authenticity in their playing and their performances because they're giving everything they've got with every performance. Even though they've been, in some cases, playing that music for 30, 40 years, those same songs, it, it's still fresh when you see it live. Mm-hmm. It does, it does. Well, yeah, and for me, uh, I, I miss rehearsing, like, even the small things, like getting into the room and being able to play once a week with the guys, like, that's gone for, for the time being, and it's, you know, something that I miss a lot because I didn't realize how much I needed that every week just to get away from, you know, work and all the other shit you have to deal with. Yeah, and maybe it's not just not realizing, it's just that we never thought that it could end like this for in, in a day. That, I think that that is surprising about the thing is everything stopped, you know, from a day or two and everybody, you know, was just like, what the hell? Didn't see that coming. And I think that's what happened because, and yeah, maybe now we, we, we're gonna think like rehearsal was, it's my way to get off. So every fucking week it's gonna be like religious. Guys, how was the making of the records? Is it something that you guys uh, are finding easy? Uh, and and how, how did you guys get through the process? It was a big process, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, at the end of this, the last week of April, it will be two years since we started tracking. Um, and, you know, we're an, we're an independent band, so uh, you, everything kind of, depending on your access to resources, can take a little longer when you're independent. Um, so we're, we're fortunate that uh, our, our other guitarist, Cox, He's an audio engineer by trade, so we went into a studio in Hamilton, Halo Studios, and we did the drums at first, um, and because we wanted to get a big, big room sound in that, and we were able to do everything else uh, at Cox's house, fortunately. But the challenge with that is he also does a lot of work as a sound engineer for documentary films, and he was traveling a lot throughout the process, so we were kind of having to go in around his travel schedules. He'd be, he'd be gone sometimes two months at a time uh, or six weeks at a time, and then he'd come back, and then we'd go in whatever we could find days, punch in whatever he had time for on, on the record. So, you know, drums were done in Hamilton, and then, like, a few months later, we started the bass, and then uh, a month after that, we started some of the guitar, and then a couple months after that, we did vocals. Um, so it took us some time to get everything done, but then uh, once we had all the tracking done, we were happy with it. The, the mixing process... Uh, was relatively quick you know, with uh, the Jerry Farley who did Sick of It All and Matt Ball Records and he was really awesome to work with and really quick um, when we got that started and so I feel like the actual production and everything leading up to the actual mixing took long but we wanted to get the sound very specific and have a very certain quality element to it before we set it up and I think we were able to do that but it just because we're an independent band we had to wait on certain schedules and stuff it took a little longer than if we just had an open budget and didn't have to worry about a lot of those life things <laughs> but that that that's cool because like you said you 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 work with a schedule so it brings a lot more um a, a lot more time to uh, to finish it but it, it's cool because the result is amazing and and i know you work your ass But I mean, like, it, it's way better that you take your time and you release something that you're proud of and you're going to be proud in 10 years than rushing yourself in a weekend and just release something that you're not proud. And there's many bands that, 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 you know, that happened to them. Like, huh, we ate that record. It was so fast. We were dumb. But I mean, like, you have to be proud of what you release every record. I think it's, <laughs> it's, it's the main goal. <laughs> Yeah, well, 
and I, I think, you know, Cox deserves a lot of credit for how good it sounds because he, you know, in between working, his downtime was spent doing work on this record with us, and he really did a lot of great stuff as far as the tracking and editing and everything like that. He's really good at what he does. He does a lot of the recordings for punk bands in Toronto out of his house, so he's a pretty talented guy. We're lucky to have him in the band. We are. Guys, do you remember the first gig? Oh, wow. The first gig. Yeah, wasn't it at the Hard Luck? It was It was at the Hard Luck, yeah. And I think... Uh, before well, Cox was in the band, or maybe he I, I, I think it was just before he joined, or he had joined, but he wasn't yet there. Uh, yeah. And, and Lou's band played, Guilt Feeder. Guilt Feeder, yeah, yeah, yeah. And some other bands, like I, I believe the band after us was some kind of like uh, melodic black metal kind of thing. I remember them having like uh, long sleeves with finger hole cut out kind of thing um, and keyboards. But anyway, yeah, it was. I, I remember the first gig somewhat. Yeah. My dad was there. <laughs> and I think there's actually on our Instagram page, the very first post is video from that show of, of uh, the song Breathe, which is off the first EP. Cool. And and how did you find anymore. how did you find your performance? I remember thinking that because we must have been jamming with Cox, so I remember playing it was just me, and I thought like uh, like the performance was was probably spot on, but like we have two guitars and go to one guitar, it just I don't know. I really notice it on stage. Mm. Yeah, it was, I think the performance was okay. Um, you know, we'd never, at that point, we'd never played with Patty live before. Um, I, I think it was the first time that the four of us had played a live set together yeah. ever. Um, but I, 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 I'd played in bands with Bruce since I was 14, um, and so we had a lot of experience playing together. I played in a band with Marty for a number of years, and we had played Bruce, Marty, and I in a band for uh, at least a year or so. And we jammed all the time, so I think the performance was okay. Just, the sound wasn't where we were hoping it would be. And we we know we know what the sound is when we have Cox and everybody all together. Like you really, uh, it, it it feels right. You yeah. know when it feels right. Yeah. yeah. Damn cool. We're uh, such in weird times. Uh, so the question: What's going to happen? Uh, without live shows and everything for now, uh, what you guys are doing? Do you uh, work on new songs or uh, since the record's going to be released, you just like let it flow? Uh, well, I know I've been just pretty much just playing the songs that we have to start practice. So I haven't been playing too much, uh, writing much, but because I still have to go to work every day, so it's not really, I'm not, I'm not quarantined at home bored. So, um, but yeah, I mean, did a did a guitar writing as well. I, but um, for now, I'm just keep ma making sure that I can remember how to play the songs. <laughs> yeah, I've been doing some some writing. Uh, I think I sent out a few riffs anyway. Uh, got a few more in the works that aren't necessarily ready to be sent out yet. So I've been that's probably about four or five nights a week. I'll go and do that for a few few hours uh and do some tracking and, and stuff and you know some of the past the time that you know, in the same room staring at a computer screen and then with the record release been spending a lot of time doing uh interviews or or putting together lyric videos or stuff like that related to the release so that we have the content to go together with everything Rad, guys, seriously, um, uh, for people, uh, go grab the records, of course. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be a bundle with shirts and some merch. Yeah, we've got lots of cool merch, and we've been, we're going to sell some, some bundles, and we've, we've got you know songs that are going to be up on all the streaming services and uh, on our band camp as well, and hopefully we'll... Uh, have some vinyl done really soon once the, the pressing plants get open and, and ready for business. Um, and we'll be out that way at the end of August if all goes according to the plan with uh, Sick of It All and Agnostic Front. So hopefully we'll see some people out at the shows and they can come meet us and 
get the t-shirt, their favorite t-shirt and their favorite size. Yeah, because I think, I don't remember the Quebec date. It, it, it was supposed to be like, what, last week or something? With Sick of It All and Anya's yeah. Front? Yeah, and they just they just announced uh, a couple of weeks ago or maybe a week ago that they were going to uh, they're going to be moving it to uh, August uh, the twenty seventh of August Thursday the twenty seventh. I really hope they work something. I know there's something in the air uh, and and way to get people to see show again with mask and everything, but it's fucked up thing. But we hope to see you, man. It's just that that show was one of my highlight of of 2020 so far but uh yeah and 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 i saw a stick from uh last year's they did like three uh days in a row in quebec city which is kind of big because quebec city is not montreal as you know guys so having them like spend three days here it was it was surreal and and it was jam-packed every night and and you know, so they moved the show. The show you were supposed to do what were supposed to happen at the Dote, uh, which is a, a bigger place, and it's so beautiful. It, it was about to sell out and everything, but it's gonna be jam back in August if if the show happened. I'm sure of that. Um, uh, th- th- is it your first time in Quebec City? It'll be our first time. Yeah, uh, with the band. Have you been there before? Well, I mean, I've I've been there, but not not to play music. Yeah, yeah, it'll be it'll be the band's first time for sure. Like we've been there in other capacities and some with other groups before, but never with Dragged In. Yeah. Cool, because you did Montreal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's, you're gonna love it. It's 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 kind of different, but uh, it's it's really cool. And and you know, um, Charlie Manuel was behind you know the booking and everything. Is doing a hell of a job, and it, it's cool because Ben R. Well take care in 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 Quebec, and I think it's uh, it, it should have it should been that way everywhere in the world, every fucking show, but it's not. But uh, yeah, we're we're, we're lucky. We and, and and we're lucky to have been like you guys uh, coming our way because it's uh, it's amazing project and congratulations. I love the record. I mean, I, I listen to it like nonstop. There's so much stuff uh, in that record. You really have to blast it out loud and listen to a lot of it. Oh, amazing. Thank you so much. Thanks, man. And, and by it, it's, it's more important than ever. <laughs> Spend some few yeah, bucks. Yeah, nice. <laughs> guys thank you so much for your times uh it means the world uh like i said i repeat myself uh we're gonna hear the interview really soon so we're gonna send all the links and you guys are amazing stick to it thank you so much for losing money in the name of music <laughs> <laughs> happy, to, happy to do it <laughs> 